Howdy everybody, welcome to RacerXOnline.com. I'm Chris Kiefer. We are at Glen Helen Raceway today for 2025 season Yamaha YZ450F. It's here. We got some refinements. We got Mike Ulrich from Yamaha with me today to talk about some of those refinements. So um, Mike, let's get to it. I guess on paper, not a lot, but some of these changes do make quite a bit of difference, I would assume, on the track. Otherwise, you guys wouldn't have updated them. Yep. Yeah, we're always looking to refine. Um, as you said, uh, there doesn't look like there's a whole lot on paper, but we already did a, a bit of some intro stuff on Tuesday. Today's Thursday. And um, yeah, we were happy to report that everybody felt uh, an improvement in the changes, the areas that we, uh, that we worked on. Um, which is what we heard from the market and from you guys in the media. So yeah, win-win. Uh, a couple of those things are uh, linkage. So the linkage ratio has changed. Basically, I was asking you if it's a rising rate. You're like, no, it's just more dampening all the way through the curve. Um, so that is something that helped bring that rear end up. I know you guys are really big on anti-squat, so we don't want a lot of pitching. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons why the linkage has changed. That's right. Uh, so yeah, the rate is basically the same as, as it was before. Uh, but it's a little bit stiffer throughout the whole range. Uh, and just like you said, yeah, it's, it's to reduce a bit of the squat, reduce the pitching. Uh, along with that, we have new suspension settings, actually a lighter rear spring rate. So for those of you guys who think you're going to buy this and, and just put the, the link on your 24 or put your 24 suspension that's been done on your 25 bike, you're going to need to get the rear shock redone uh, because it is quite a bit different both in the valving as well as the spring rate. Uh, that's a good point. So if you guys are saying, hey, Kiefer, can I just change my spring rate? No, because the valving stack actually is different along with the spring rate. So they went from a 5.8 last year to a 5.6 this year. So that has changed. Uh, valving inside the fork is also changed along with some parts inside the fork. Uh, some of you guys have been complaining about riding uh, with your boots on top of these foot peg mounts. I haven't had that problem, but uh, Yamaha shaved that down a little bit. Yep, yeah, we, uh, we changed the foot peg mounts to be a little more ergonomically friendly. Uh, same thing for me, it wasn't a problem, but we had some comments where people were actually standing on the mounts, so we shaved them down, reshaped them, and uh, hopefully that won't be an issue anymore. All right, another thing that's uh, probably near and dear to my heart because I'm a clutch abuser, ask Mike, I ask for clutch plates all the time. Uh, you guys actually uh, created a little bit of a different updated sleeve with increased flow on the clutch basket itself, or is it the inner pressure plate? No, so it's the inner clutch basket. Yeah, we uh, call it the sleeve, but uh, yeah, it's the inner clutch hub. Uh, we went from six uh, oiling holes to 18, so quite a bit more oil flow, cooling for the clutch, so hopefully that uh, increases the clutch durability as well. Also, the dampener on the uh on the clutch, they have been revised, a little shape change, so that is somewhat different. So along with that clutch update, you guys still offer the hydraulic clutch, that is still an option through GYTR? Yep, that's, a, that's an option, uh, 299 bucks. I think it's, it's really, I think best of both worlds, there's a lot of guys out there who are just hardcore cable guys. Uh, I'm in that, um, in that camp as well, uh, but the guys who do want to switch to the uh, hydraulic clutch, uh, we make that available for them um, through the GYTR catalog. Uh, new throttle tube, it says additional 10 millime millimeter clearance. So I guess the gap between the actual, the, the throttle housing and the, the tube itself is a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. And this is, that's actually a huge thing for me. Uh, when I worked in the testing group, I'd asked for that for years. Uh, it sounds like a, like a small thing, but the 24 throttle grip was right up against the housing. Uh, Yama thumb. Exactly. Yeah, you'd get friction, you'd push your thumb into the housing, eventually create a thumb uh, or a Yama thumb blister. Um, so this addresses that as well. All right, a couple other things. Uh, the actual kill switch map switch cluster has been reset, so a little bit uh, more of a defined push. Um, what that does, I think, and Mike can clarify this, is if you guys are up and near the front of the bar, you don't want to be pushing the map switch or hit that kill switch, so it just makes it a little bit more difficult to do that while you're riding. Yeah, there's a little more separation, kind of a rib between the, the buttons now, so it makes it a little bit easier to define which one you're pressing, either the kill switch or the map switch. Also, if you do hit it with your chest or something, uh, you're not going to hit one of those buttons. All right, of course, uh, Yamaha started this whole power tuner app. You've seen a lot of other manufacturers follow suit once Yamaha did that, so that is still available. 
I do hear that the mapping has been changed slightly, so we're gonna go see if that helps a little bit of a roll on, more connection to the throttle, but uh, those maps are still available. You go to your Yamaha Power Tuner app, you can download that, it's super easy to use. Even a boomer like you, you're watching this, you're 50 some years old, it's super easy to do. We have a bunch of maps on my website, as well as I'm sure we're gonna test a couple other maps today. We'll put that on my website. But we're gonna go rip this thing around Glen Helen Raceway today. I've brought Steve Mathis, so if you're a Blue Crew diehard guy and you wanna see a guy just talk about how great this bike is, you're gonna listen to Steve. And then if you want to know the real truth, you're gonna listen to me. Almost forgot one of the key points to the changes on the 2025. The front engine mount has been changed. Last year they had a two-piece front uh, mount system on each side. Now we're just one solid piece. The top hanger is the same? The top hanger is the same. Uh, the front ones, yeah, it's a one piece. Also, the shape has changed. And really, it's it's kind of a combination of everything. The the link, along with the suspension settings, uh, there's different style of valve, a delta valve in the in the forks, uh, and the, uh, the engine mounts uh, all kind of culminate to... Uh, More comfort? A better comfort front, better comfort. front end feel. Okay, okay. More com okay, I'll, I'll give you more comfort. Uh, in the front end, that was something that we obviously heard from the, uh, from the market as well as from Chris. I uh, wanted a better front end feel, um, maybe better stability out of the front. So that's what we tried to get. And like I said, Tuesday, we got a really positive response from it. So we'll see how Chris feels about it. The real testers are here on Thursday. So stay tuned, we're gonna be back. It looks smooth right now, but we're gonna be here a while. It's gonna get rough. We're gonna try this whole all of these things that Travis Preston and the crew over at the R&D department worked on. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, wrapped it up here at Glen Helen Raceway, 2025 Yamaha YZ450F, right here to the right of me, Steve Mathis. If you want the riveting testing content about a Yamaha, you know this guy right here has it. Anything Blue Crew, there's going to be so much positivity. It's a bike of the year. <laughs> that's it. All right, thanks for joining us. That's racerxonline.com. Uh, that's the review for today. No, listen, um, it's very similar. They changed some linkage, right? They changed a few things in the fork for suspension valving, but I'll be honest. I mean, I'm coming from a bike that the 20. That's bougie. Yeah. So I'm back on a stock bike. But I will say this. Getting back on a stalker with a stock exhaust and the stock map, and I can manage it a little better, ride it more harder because it's not as hard hitting, makes me think that maybe I'll go back to my 2024 and maybe mellow that thing out a little bit. So I think I learned something from the 25 settings that made it more manageable for my 24. So look. Uh as you guys know, when it's time for me to go race, when I do race, I like to have a Yamaha YZ450 because I feel like, to me, that's the best bike for me to go race and do the best that I can. So, um, Except for at Loretta's. Except for at Loretta's, yeah. when the body wasn't great. Yeah. <laughs> Not Loretta's. <laughs> Not Loretta's. Uh, so the change points on the 2025, look, the, the big change points, like Steve said, are the linkage. You get... Uh, beefier dampening, quali damping quality on the linkage. And so they dropped that spring rate from a 5.8 to a 5.6. That is the first thing that I noticed when I went out there. Last year's bike seemed a little bit tough in the rear for me. And what I mean by that is when I'm charged into a braking bumps, I feel like there's more comfort within the fork, but the shock was had a firmer feel. So it left me 
wanting a little bit more balance off throttle with the older bike. Now with the linkage and the softer spring, I don't get quite as a tough feeling coming into corners, which makes me have better balance coming into these rough choppy corners that Glen Helen provides. Another thing is I complained about last year is like wide open to off throttle, I got a little bit of a twitch. As you guys know, I'm a big positive believer in the 2022 frame for stability. Yamaha lost some of that in 23, but they gained cornering, lightweight feel, all the things that we wanted out of the 22, but you got to sacrifice something, right? So now we have a solid front mount, which is what I do on my race bike. Uh, FCP offers different engine mounts. Well, now instead of two uh, plates on each side, the left and the right side, four millimeters each thickness, so you eight millimeters. Now you got one solid plate that's eight millimeters. That's exactly what I did on my 2024. And what that does, it just gives you more front tire contact, more feel. I don't have to bank against a berm to get underneath a berm when it's blown out. So having those engine mounts on paper, it's not huge, right? You're like, hey, it's the same measurement, eight millimeters, but having a solid versus a split does make quite a bit of difference and a feel on the track. So those are the two things that are beneficial and are better on this bike. Steve, you didn't feel that. Negative, I didn't really feel that, um, to be honest. Yeah, I just didn't. It's a great bike. Um, like Chris said, though, and we talked about this with the 2023, they gave some things up on the 2022 that I liked. Yeah. Uh, for me, the biggest thing was the tractable motor. Yeah. I feel like the 23, they lost that bottom end, the ability to ride in any gear. But, uh, like you said, cornering's better, uh, flickability is better on the new model. So it's a, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, take away and give, give backs on different ends of things. As far as this bike goes, yeah, I mean, I'm stoked that it, it, they didn't ruin it. They didn't screw it up. Uh, it feels like a good old, solid, reliable bike it always did, or the bike of the year, as some say. Ah. Well, we're going to slow the roll on there. It's a first impression, so we're going to slow that down. But I will say it is more stable. So if you're looking for more stability from your 24, 23 YZ450F, this is a better direction. No, you can't just bolt this linkage on your old bike because you're going to have to change the spring and the valving. And I guess you could do that if you did that to your shock, but it's just not a, a swap over and then you're good to go. You can, however, change these mounts. Yamaha didn't tell me you could, but... From what I've known with these mounts, the top mount is the same from last year. The front mount mounting points are the same, but just the thicknesses are different. So yes, you could essentially buy these 25 front mounts and get some more front end traction, which you may need. Now, moving on the suspension side of things, I thought it was interesting. Steve told me he actually got 105 millimeters of sag for his weight and 105 millimeters for my weight. So that's quite a bit of difference within this spring rate. Um, what I did to this, I felt like the fork has a little bit more damping quality than last year. So again, balance is better off throttle, but I still ended up dropping my fork from five millimeters to two millimeters. This is actually Steve's bike. It looks like you dropped yours flush. Five mil down, yeah. We went five mil down to kind of, I felt like a little bit um, high in the back. Okay. So we dropped that down, balanced it out a little bit, but um, I'm not so sure I like it for the cornering, obviously. So here at Glen Helen, uh, it's it's washy on the insides. There's no clear defined inside outsides. There's no ruts. There's no ruts. Yeah. So you kind of got to figure it out and something like this. I, I don't know. I might go back and go back up too. So for me, I went up uh, to two millimeters or down to two millimeters, sorry, and then went in on the compression too to just kind of get some hold up. And that didn't sacrifice a lot of cornering for me or comfort. Actually, I gained a little bit of comfort because it wasn't so low in the rear. So I like that. 105 millimeters in sag. I did not even mess with the compression, low speed or high speed, left that stock. I'll evolve that as I ride this more, but hopping on this thing right away, first impression, it's a better Yamaha and where I wanted it to be better, it got a little bit better. I needed more stability. I thought it cornered well. I just needed to track better, have better bite on lean angle. And so far we got a little bit better here in 2025, which I like. A couple little things, Steve, and I don't know if you noticed this, but they increased the distance from the housing to the throttle tube. Yama thumb is a real thing that's been going on for years. I'm sure if you read the magazines, everyone talks about that. I don't get it because I ride so much, but a lot of you guys do. Some uh, media guys here today did get some on the 24, because we had the 24 to uh, compare the 25 to. And then you get on this, and it doesn't really rub on your thumb. So that is an improvement. Um, of course, the grips are the same. Those are still hard and, and, and not the most friendly grips, but at least you're not going to rub your thumb raw right when you get your Yamaha YZ450F. And another thing, after I move this product placement for Steve, uh, is this map switch kill switch cluster. Uh, 
they recessed the button so the actual housing is a little bit further out so it's a little bit tougher to push your buttons but actually on the bike that prevents you from hitting it i never really hit it i don't think i'm that far forward on the bike even on the 24 uh, but nonetheless that's a safety feature don't know if you even care or... i definitely noticed it when i went to hit the kill button but i never had a problem before uh, my bike came with a cable clutch my 24 is a hydraulic clutch i prefer the hydraulic clutch why I just think it feels smoother. It feels uh, easy to actuate. Um, yeah, just it feels smoother, I guess, would be the one word that I think. So I would put the GYTR Hydro Clutch on my 2025. Um, I'm a oh, kid. Also, I like the Yamaha on the seat. That's cool. Yeah, that's kind of new, right? Yeah. Do you care about the, sh the seat shape? No. It doesn't bother you? Nope. Well, guys with small butts like me, I, I, I can't do it. He's got a big behind, but man, it, it hurts my butt a little bit. So uh, a stiffer foam actually does help. You think it'd be worse, but it actually does help. Um, but for me, the housing is a nice touch. The throttle tube is also a nice touch. Um, you put some regular soft Renthal half medium waffle grips on it, live your life happy. I like the bar shape, that hasn't changed. The bar pad, eh, I throw that thing in the trash right away. That's my number one complaint. Is it? And then I didn't ask Travis Preston. My number two complaint was the washer on the upper shock bolt. Did we get rid of that thing or do we still got a washer? We there? still got it. Yeah, that's a joke. Yeah. You, you always lose it. Yeah, it always loses, it drops off. So if I have a wish for 2026, it's a better bar pad and get rid of that. Put a flange and nut on the upper shock bolt. Get a magnet, get ready if you take your shock off because you will drop that and you will have to search for about 15 minutes with about five or six cuss words. So uh, get ready. Also, they changed the foot pegs. Yep. But I don't notice and I don't even know. Yeah, like, I talked what? about that in the beginning of the show. So okay. they shaved down the actual foot peg mount. Okay. The, the actual distance and the height and the measurements are all the same from last year. So that hasn't changed. But I never really found my foot resting on the mount last year. And I guess you didn't either. No. So, but I've heard other people email me and said, hey, they complain about they're hitting the mount. So now that is a flatter surface. So if you do get your boot up there, it doesn't feel so awkward. So that is something uh, to be known. And I just want to let you guys know, before we start a rolling tape, Steve took a note out of Jody Weisel's handbook, and he would like to go up a tooth on this, on this gearing. Yeah, basically it's something I've done on every generation of Yamahas, even the older model. Just just Jody it, go one tooth up. I feel like it just allows you to stay a little gear higher. Um, I think if you're really fast, you don't need to. If you carry corner speed like Chris, you don't need to. But if you're slower, fatter, like me, I think one tooth is a real nice touch and I will be doing that as well. Third gear is really friendly on this bike. I've talked about this all the time. Out of all the engines in the 450 class, this is the easiest bike to ride in third gear. And what Steve says, I concur, if you do want to ride third gear more, go up a tooth, that will help. Um, overall, um, what I was told, the mapping was changed a little bit from 2024. I went through a couple maps that will go up on my website and Steve's site if you guys want to have some optional Yamaha power tuner maps. Uh, I did a smooth linear map and also a torque map. Uh, the smooth linear map is really mellow if you guys are looking to tame this beast down. You can really tell from stock to that. There's a big difference. And also the torque map was just a little bit more torque. You want to run third gear, it does help that. So we'll have that map up on my side as well. But as far as engine goes, it's hard to beat a YZ450F engine. This very free feeling, easy to ride. You could, uh, for me, I still feel like you can lug it. Not quite like the 2022, but more so than any other 450 out there right now. Um, it just gives you a wide parameter and more freedom um, to ride this bike how you want it. You could rev it and be aggressive, or you could be lazy and lug it. So I do like that. I find myself doing both, and uh, it rewards you from either. So it doesn't matter what type of rider you are, it will do that for you. Otherwise, quality, my 2024, no problems. Uh, 60 hours on or so. They changed the clutch a little bit this year to get more oil flow through the clutch. So I'm gonna be testing that because I am a clutch dragger. Normally, I'm only about 10 hours before I fry some clutch plates. So we'll see if that improves in 2025. We'll have updates over on Steve's site as well as my site. Uh, but overall, friendly bike to ride, better Yamaha. We're not gonna go crazy yet, Steve, and say bike of the year. Would you like to do shootouts this year? No, no. It's I agree, I don't wanna do shootouts either. But we'll, we'll evolve this bike. We'll give you some settings up on my site and we'll guide you along the way. If you have any questions, Chris at KieferInkTesting.com. Steve loves to answer questions too. No, don't, just email Chris. Chris at KieferInkTesting.com. I'm happy to help you out. And uh, don't forget 12 issues, $30 for Racer X Magazine. Steve writes a bunch of stuff that you can't see online. Yep, bike of the year. Bike of the year. All right, we'll see you on the next go around. 2025 is here, people. See ya.